So in an effort to kind of move offshore with our raster modeling, I've decided to look, kind of fish around for <laughs> um, a new problem. And just doing some Google searching, I found newenglandboating.com. Um, I'm not sure what the regulations are on fishing for bottom fish. Um, but I found these depths, and that should be interesting for us in GIS land. So 120 to 250 feet and 150 to 200 feet. Um, we're going to use these numbers in um, a map that we're going to make to try to find cod um, and haddock kind of recreational fishing grounds. So the depth is something we can easily find, and so we'll look for a, a bathymetric raster model. But the other variables that I'd like to consider are how far off of the mainland do we need to go in a boat to find these grounds? And the other one I'd like to consider is how crowded is it likely to be? Um, let's just say that for our ideal fishing experience, there are going to be less um, uh, less numbers of boats around. There will be fewer boats. And so we'll just keep it to those three for now. Um, depth, uh, density of vessel traffic, and uh, distance from mainland. I'm not going to do distance from land because um, you know, I don't have a house on Vinyl Haven or Isla Ho, so uh, we're going to just try to keep it as the proximity kind of to the mainland as our second variable. All right, so let's find our um, our bathymetric uh, digital elevation model, and I'm going to type in NOAA bathymetric GIS data. And NOAA stands for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. It's a very important kind of government in administration that does a lot of um, data curation and gathering for, um, you know, for the U.S. So type that in, and he says, okay. <laughs> it doesn't think bathymetric is an actual word, but it is. It just wants us to search for bathymetry. Um, right here we've got https w okay n ngdc noaa.gov bathymetric and it says bathymetry and global relief so i think that looks pretty good um we're gonna probably use something like that but i'm gonna go to the main website first to see what's going on and this site's really good i think what we want though is we want an extract custom grid we're gonna tell the website exactly what section we want so we don't have to sift through lots of data sets um, this is a really great kind of interface if you want to go explore. Um, now that they have every single vessel that's underway, I think is recording uh, bathymetric data in some way now. But let's just go straight to extract custom grids. And of course it warns us that we shouldn't use this for navigation, which is hilarious. Um, I'm going to zoom in down here to main while well, it loads. And it says, okay, step one, choose a layer. Well, the layer that we want is coastal relief models. And some of these elevation models were used um, for kind of sea level rise, inundation types of modeling. So they're a little coarse. Uh, one pixel is about 90 meters. But I think that's going to work because we're looking at the entire kind of mid-coast main region. So, And now what we have to do is we actually have to select the extent. So I'm going to zoom in one more kind of zoom level just to get a little bit closer. And that looks pretty good. I think what I want to do is we have to always kind of define our own problems. So I think I want this problem to be uh, between kind of small point down here and um, Jones Port up here. Um, just these two points. Let's just call that. This is our study area. We've got Penobscot Bay, the mid coast region, and a little bit of down east Maine starting to come in. But uh, let's just kind of keep it to those spots. So how can we select our area? Um, up in this corner, we have uh, select with coordinates. If we were very knowledgeable and kind of already had it in our brains what we wanted, we could just set the extents this way. Um, I'm not going to do that. I just want to draw a box because that's more fun and easy. So over here it says uh, select with rectangle. And I'm going to click that. I think what I'm going to do is it says, okay, press down to let go, or press down to start and let go to finish. I'm going to go a little ways off of small point and just go, I'm going to click and drag, go all the way up to somewhere near Jonesport. I'll include those these islands right here. 
and you know I think that's pretty good that's a pretty good size image and so I let go and here are my coordinates that it kind of got automatically geotiff our friend we like that and it says click here to download and it should download there it comes okay only four megabytes very cool so let's bring that into QGIS and just take a look at what we what we got. I'm going to drag this to my desktop. I'm going to make a new folder. And I'm going to call this um, lab3. Put that in the folder and open up Q. All right, here we are. So I'm going to open up my lab3 folder and drag in my my new image and see what it looks like. Wow, interesting, right? So hopefully this looks somewhat familiar. Um, it's a digital elevation model and it's coastal relief, which means it's it's both bathymetry, meaning below sea level, as well as topography, which is above sea level. And the trick is that it's just one giant image, right? Um, it's not, it's not um, the only hint we have of what's underwater and what's above water is that what's underwater has a negative sign and what's above water has a positive or no sign. So we don't get any kind of, there's no color scheme here. We have to kind of give it a color scheme if that's what we want to do. Um, I think what I'd like to do is actually just uh, make a binary file, kind of a Boolean raster that says, yes, this is land or no, this is not land. So I'm hoping you might know how to do that right now. Um, and so uh, I'm going to just make one. And hopefully you can kind of follow along. I'm going to say greater than zero, right, is going to be land. And it came through. It just it came through on bottom. So let's just see what that looks like. That should look a little bit more familiar now. Um, you might see that, you know, okay, Penobscot Bay, Mount Desert Island, Vinyl Haven, Idaho, that kind of thing. Now I'm hoping you might you might not recognize it yet, but the image looks a little squat, doesn't it? Like it's not quite right. Like the shape of this island um, of Mount Desert is is a little it's it's a little you know fat. It doesn't quite um, look like it should. And what I'm hoping you might notice as well is that our units, our map units, are actually not in feet or meters. They're in decimal degrees. And decimal degrees are kind of the way that we represent latitude and longitude um, when something is unprojected. So this data set actually has um, it's, it has a geographic coordinate system, meaning latitude and longitude, but it does not have a projected coordinate system. It is only being stored in terms of where every single pixel is located in degrees. So we can use a tool like raster calculator because we're just changing the values that already exist but we need to be careful using a tool like um, a measurement tool or um, area tools or things like that if we want to actually measure on this uh, you know using this data we need to project it first so the way you project a raster is you go up here and you say okay raster and projections, and it calls it warp, which is a way to re, you know reproject um, this uh, this unprojected raster. And it, what that means is that it it actually has to rewrite the file. So each of these pixels needs to be rewritten um, and given actual physical dimensions. So to do that, let's actually um, just do that to our original file CRM you know one, and let's go to project reproject warp and I'm gonna say we want to reproject this one let's call this um, relief PROJ for projected I'm gonna make it a TIFF and say save now the source CRS let's just see it came in automatically but I wanna see what this is so I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna go in here and see if I hit my filter what what that comes up with it's telling me that the coordinate reference system EPSG this is a, a code 4326 and that means that it's in the the geographic datum WGIS84 which is one of the two that we've talked about that you should um, 
kind of start to recognize. So there's no projected coordinate system, and that's what we have to give it. All right, it's in WGS84, which is this code. And we're going to change it, though. We're going to make our target SRS, which is Spatial Reference System. And we're going to choose UTM 19 North, or N. And uh, what that means is it's a, it's a universal transverse mercator system. And all of Maine does really well in this kind of in this projection. So it's a safe projection to choose. And uh, we'll talk more about projections in two weeks. But for now, I just want you to know that UTM 19 North is good for Maine. And I'm going to choose, um, let's just stay in the same datum, WGS84. Right? This is the datum that we've chosen that our data comes in. So let's just make the whole project in WGS84. And we'll use UTM Zone 19 North. And I say OK. And now that should be good. All right, and I'm going to say OK. So it looks like nothing changed. If I look at this kind of relief projected on top of here, we might say, OK, well, it looks almost exactly the same, except um, this one's a little twisted, right? It, it has some no data issues on the, esh on the edge here. But if I was to just start a completely new project, and I just brought in my projected file first, you're going to see, oh, wow, it looks, it looks very different, right? The extent, it's a lot taller now. It's, uh, it's got the proper shape of main. Or rather, the pixels have a proper shape in which they actually represent uh, linear units. And I hope you can also see that the units have changed down here. And they're, they're an actual linear unit instead of um, kind of a degree unit. So that's important. OK. I'm going to show you something that might be a little confusing, but it's good to see it early. So I've just thrown in this, and it has, we've agreed, some kind of linear unit, probably meters or feet. If I go back to my land file, and I throw that in too, it still lines up. And what's strange is that we made the land file from the CRM file, which did not have a projection. So you might be wondering, how could they possibly line up now that the units are different? Well. This is a very important thing, and I hope that um, you remember to find the tag in the video so you can come back if you need to find it again. You go to Project and Project Properties. Okay? And in the Project Properties, under CRS, meaning Coordinate Reference System, this little box up here says Enable On The Fly CRS Transformation. And what that means is that the computer's smart. It's saying, okay, these two files are actually in completely different coordinate systems, but I know what they are, so I can translate them on the fly. I can do that kind of real time so that you don't need to project it. Um, this land file, the actual data is still stored in decimal degrees, lat long, but it's being reprojected on the fly so that we can see them on top of each other. If I unclick this and say, okay, poof, it disappears, right? So where did it go? And the quick way to go between kind of layer extents is to right click your layer that you're interested in, in this case land, the one that disappeared. I'm going to right click that, and go to zoom to layer. And I don't know if you noticed, but it just got squat again, right? It doesn't, it, it's actually trying to take on the projection that this one is in. So these units look like decimal degrees, but we're really still in this projection. And this file right here, the land file, is just a very, very small extent somewhere in the negative numbers on the in this entire canvas. So the map canvas can only be one set of coordinates at a time. And right now, that set of coordinates is relief projection because we brought that in first. So if that's a little confusing, um, just kind of sit with it for a while. And as we go on, I'm going to keep reinforcing the idea um, that there's kind of units. They can either be linear or decimal degrees. And whatever you bring in first is kind of the, is the coordinate system you're working within. So uh, let's go to the next, uh, the next step.